Hi, my name's Mike Dinellan. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Central Lancashire. This short video demonstrates airway management techniques and the potential complications. In the spontaneously breathing anaesthetised patient, airway obstruction can be experienced. This is due to the anaesthetic induction agent causing the patient to experience a loss of muscular tone, causing the soft palate, tongue and epiglottis to move towards the back wall of the throat. Other causes of airway obstruction include head injury, the effects of alcohol or drugs, and obstruction due to foreign bodies such as solid food, blood clots and other miscellaneous objects. Clinical signs of an obstructed airway include noisy breathing, increased cyanosis, seesaw movement of the abdomen and chest, and in drawing of the supraclavicular, suprasternal and intercostal spaces during obstructed inspiration. Additionally, there can be seen a reduction in the movement of the reservoir bag of the anaesthetic breathing system. Initial management of the obstructed airway calls for manoeuvres to clear the airway, these being head tilt, chin lift and jaw thrust. Suction may also be required. A number of adjuncts may also be used to improve the patency of the airway, these being the oral pharyngeal or Gidel airway or a nasal pharyngeal airway. Oral pharyngeal airways, when inserted correctly, lie above and behind the tongue, preventing the tongue and epiglottis from falling backwards and causing airway obstruction. They consist of a flange, a rigid bite block, and an anatomically shaped body. For safety purposes, the intersurgical oral pharyngeal airway has been designed without the conventional bite block. The one-piece design overcomes the risks of dislodgement of the bite block, which could actually cause an obstruction of the airway. Oral pharyngeal airways come in a variety of sizes, from size treble zero to size five. The appropriate size is determined by placing the airway adjacent to the patient's face with a flange at the corner of the mouth. The tip of the airway should end approximately at the angle of the jaw. In the adult patient, the airway should be inserted with the pharyngeal opening facing the roof of the mouth, then rotated 180 degrees as it passes the back of the tongue. Potential complications with the use of oral pharyngeal airways include trauma to the soft tissues of the mouth during insertion, damage to the teeth including caps and crowns, vomiting, gagging, and laryngeal spasm. With bag mask ventilation, gastric distension can be caused, increasing the risk of vomiting. In order to manually ventilate a patient, an anaesthetic breathing system such as the Mapleson C can be utilised. Connected to a oxygen supply at the fresh gas outlet, a correctly fitting face mask is placed over the patient's face in order to obtain a tight seal. This can be achieved by hooking the fifth finger at the angle of the jaw, holding the mandibular body with the third and fourth fingers, and holding the mask between the index finger and thumb at the position of the angle mount. The adjustable pressure limiting valve on the anaesthetic breathing system is adjusted in order for oxygen to accumulate in the reservoir bag and then the bag is squeezed in order to deliver oxygen to the patient. If this technique is correctly undertaken, the patient's chest will rise during ventilation. In the final minute of oxygenation, the supraglottic airway should be lubricated according to the manufacturer's instructions. With the eye gel, it's particularly important that the device is lubricated on all four sides of the cuff and not just on the tip and posterior surface. Do not use silicon-based lubricants. After lubrication has been completed, ensure that no bolus of lubricant remains in the bowl of the cuff or elsewhere on the device. Avoid touching the cuff of the device with your hands. Do not place the device onto the pillow or chest of the patient and always use the protective cradle provided. Do not use unsterile gauze to help lubricate the device. 
Do not apply lubricant too long before insertion and always ensure dentures or plates are removed from the mouth before attempting insertion. The device should now be inserted according to the manufacturer's instructions for use and taped down maxilla to maxilla. Once the patient is taken into recovery, the patient's airway will need to be maintained and oxygen administered via a T-piece. The device, eye gel or laryngeal mask will need to be removed and oxygen delivered via an MC mask. 